If you want to know what you spend every month on your EV, if you want to know all of your trips, how far did you go, what was your average consumption, if you want to know all of your charging sessions, how many kilowatt hours did you charge, what is your AC to DC ratio, and you don't want to write all of this down yourself, then Tronity is exactly what you need. Tronity connects to your car, a lot of brands are supported, and in the app or in a browser you can see all of this data. You can also have 100% text compliant driver's logbook. My viewers get 25% off if they use the link in the description below. Hello everyone, today we're gonna look at the charging curve of the Volkswagen ID3 GTX. We have a new battery, bigger, it has 79 kilowatt hours where all the others uh, before had 77 kilowatt hours like the ID3 Pro S, the ID4 Pro, ID7 and so on. So the ID3 GTX has the second biggest battery that you can have uh, from Volkswagen in an MEB platform car. You can also, the only bigger one is in the ID7 Pro S and in the ID bus along wheelbase, uh, 86 kilowatt hour uh, usable energy battery. And so it, I want to see how the GTX is charging, how is the curve, and of course I want to compare it to other Volkswagen ID cars, my ID7 and so on, and the old uh, ID3 Pro S, and also important, how about a range charged into the battery when you're driving, because that's the most important. The ID3 has not that high of consumption as the ID4, ID5, but higher consumption than the ID7. And here we are at Ionity. I charge from 9 to 90 percent and it goes up right away to around 181, uh, 182 kilowatt. Our peak is at 189 kilowatt. We are at 500 amp. That's the limit that CCS and Ionity and other hyperchargers can give you. Here we had the peak and at 32, 33 percent and then we go down. But we go down very slowly and very steadily. It's not an abrupt going down. After 12 minutes we have charged 33 kilowatt hours still at 140 kilowatt at 50% 5532 what do we have at 60% here we go 60% 122 kilowatt still when are we going under 100 kilowatt that's always interesting in my ID7 it was at 64% and where it is, where is it here? Here, 71%. We go under 100 kilowatt. That's still okay. We're still at 95 kilowatt at 75%. That's awesome. 25 minutes charge, we, and we're almost at 80%. There we are after 26 minutes, still 84 kilowatt. That's just awesome. At 85, 78 kilowatt, it's a great curve, and it slowly goes down. There is no whoop. That's so awesome. And then we are done. Wow. And this you can see here in the graph as well. It goes up uh, fast and then slowly up to the peak at around 190, uh, 89 kilowatt. So not the 191, 192 that I get in my ID7, but still it stays very well and then goes slowly, slowly down. This is an amazing charging curve. Comparing it to other cars, first the times, the ID3 GTX takes 10 uh, to 80%, 25 minutes, my ID7 25 and a half minutes, but I want to redo the test because I plugged in at 10%, I want to plug in at 8% or so. The ID4 GTX uh, 29 minutes and the ID7 Pro S, which has a bigger battery, also 25 minutes. So it's the best charging of course, and we see that in the graph as well. And we in, in here we have four different cars. In green is the ID3 GTX. In uh, yellow we have the ID7 Pro S with the big battery. Blue is the ID4 GTX and in red is my own ID7. And as you can see the ID4 GTX has here a little going down that the other others don't have. So I don't know if this is should be like that, but I only did one charging test in the ID4 GTX. And by the way, the ID4 GTX has the same battery than an ID7 Pro S, ID3 Pro S, sorry. So you can take this as the same charging curve. And I, but I don't know if this is representative here. The rest, when I look here, looks very good. In my ID7, what I didn't like and I think is a bit weird is back here that uh, maybe this is a bit more down than it should be. But 
Pro S ID7, you see how amazing this charging curve is above all the others the whole time. ID3 GTX is very close to my ID7 and above 58% or so. It's above my ID7, which is awesome and has more battery in there. Oh, really amazing. ID4 GTX slash old ID3 Pro S or still now what you can get now is always underneath the GTX the whole time. It's underneath all the cars except uh, at around 62%, 63 It's very close to my ID7. With the kilowatt hours charged, we see the same uh, the same result that the ID7 Pro S here in blue now, uh, for whatever reason, uh, charged the most kilowatt hours into the battery. Then the ID3 and ID7 are very similar, and ID4 GTX is a bit lower. And here again is this thing where the ID4 GTX went down a bit. But more important is the range added here. I put in the kilowatt hours charged, so the whole range that we see here is including charging losses, which is not real, but it's hard to do when you don't know exactly what the charging loss is. But I take my ID7 had in the summer a great uh, 130 kilometers an hour range test. Uh, average consumption 174. The Pro S, I know the difference, but I haven't tested it in the summer, will have around 182 higher consumption because it's heavier, a bigger battery, get more range, but it's a bit of more uh, higher consumption. The ID4 GTX would have 224 because it's an SUV, and the ID3 GTX, uh, again, estimation a bit higher consumption than the Pro S but still great because it has the old all four cars have the new motor <laughs> by the way um, has 190 watt hours per kilometer that is an estimation i haven't tested it in the summer but when i look at the range i see that of course the id4 gtx is the lowest because it's an suv high consumption then the id3 because the consumption is not that amazing as the id7 and it's all because of the drag coefficient in the id7 that's just awesome but when you look at the range uh, charged into the battery the both id7s have almost the same till around 12-13 minutes and then the Pro S has just higher power and more range into the battery which is awesome at around 20% uh, we see that is what is this 20-30 kilometers more and usually that's also the 25 minutes this is where you leave because you charge to to your 80% and then you have 30 kilometers more which is awesome but the ID3 GTX still nice still amazing but the ID3 GTX is really a great package, great battery, bigger battery, consumption is okay, great charging curve, the new motor with lower consumption, it's really a great car. I can't wait to drive the ID3 GTX Performance. I will get a car, press car for a week in the end of September, January, I think, so it will take a while. I'm still trying to get the Cupra Born VZ, which also has the same 240 kilowatt motor, so more power, but still the same efficient motor. But I don't know yet if they will get it at some point. Uh, uh, but I'm very, very interested to see that how then uh, the, the feel is. I still think that the GTX ID3 should have 19 inch wheels available. So if you really want the uh, more range, if you want a very, very efficient car, you should be able without having to pay for the 20 inch wheels and then buy the, the 19 inch wheels extra. That would be amazing. I would prefer that and also more comfort and less noise. If you want to follow me on Instagram, Battery Life one and if you want to support the channel, there's a Patreon link in the description below and here on YouTube there's also channel membership. And if you want to know what's happening behind the scenes, I have a third YouTube channel, Behind the Battery. But that's it for me. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day and take care. Bye.